G'day everyone. This is going to be a slightly different video for me today. It's the story and the history of this little um, upright Whedon steam engine that's coming up to a hundred years old. It's almost a century old and I uh, just want to tell you a little bit about it. I bought this roughly about 10 years ago on eBay and when I got it I knew it was old and I don't know if you know a lot about Whedon's but they uh, they were made fairly cheaply I think you can see that a lot of it's pressed metal and even on here like nothing's really perfect along here where they've see you can see that's about maybe four or five mils and here's about three mil. Something else, I'm just going to take the burner out because the burner is an interesting part of this engine. Take the burner out. It's a little bit hard. There we go. Okay, I've got the burner out. We're going to come back to the burner in a minute. Now, I don't know if all Whedon's are like this, but you can see that this has been a, a pressed base on this Whedon. But uh, this is backwards. It's got Whedon's belt backwards and we've got trademark and we've got a, a registered patent office, it says in here. But um, if anyone else has got one of these upright Whedon's, I'd be really interested to know if you could have a look at uh, the base and tell me if your base has been put in on the press upside down and if Whedon is put on backwards or around the right way. But anyway, there you have it. So far, we're up to this Whedon upright. You can see the, another press part here. So a lot of it's been made with press parts. So I'll put that chimney back on. But it's whole. I've never run this. I've had it for nearly 10 years, but I've never run this. But anyway, it came from uh, Pittsburgh in America, eBay, and when I received it, had the burner in there. Now, I fill up a lot of my burners with metho, with one of these cheap bottles off eBay. It's got the needle, needle at the top. Very easy to just stick in a hole and fill up with metho. Luckily, I never fired this one and luckily I never put metho in that way because one day I, was, I opened it up and inside was this interesting little note. Now I'll, I'll stop the video in a minute now and uh, I'll show you some close-ups of that note but uh, years and years ago I posted on the, the Maymod forum and one of the members there, uh, Moose Men, his first name's Odalyn, his, his um, screen name is Moose Man. After he saw what was in here, he did some sleuthing work on Ancestry.com. And I'm going to show you now what's interesting about this engine and the history. It's a little bit sad, but it's good to know the history of these engines. So here we go. And... Uh, as I said before, I've never done a video like this before, so it's a little bit different. So bear with me, and I'm going to start showing you some screenshots now. It's just absolutely fascinating to me that um, that note was in there. Someone had put that note in the burner and I bought this off eBay as I mentioned before and now it's residing on the south coast of New South Wales, Australia. I contacted the, the seller of this and they hadn't looked in here, they knew nothing about it. I gathered from the conversation that they bought this at just at an estate sale and they 
they were surprised they'd never looked inside the burner so they had no idea that note was in there but it's it's just sad to think that uh, someone wrote this that their brother Frank uh, born in 1914 received this on Christmas Day around 1925 and uh, sadly he only lived till 1930 so he was just 15 or 16 when he passed away and this is his steam engine he got this steam engine that young lad who passed away at 15 got this steam engine in 1925 but it's just absolutely just blows my mind that that note was in there I wish I could um, find out some more information about the family to contact them now but anyway now I'm going to show you some more sleuthing work done by uh, Moose Man on the Main Mod Forum. So stand by. Here we have the 14th census of the United States for 1920 and it's the population census. Now I've zoomed in here. Now this is the Skirbo family. This is Father Albert, Rose, Francis and Alfred. Now the Father Albert Skirbo who bought the engine was 30 in 1920 in uh, Kings, New York when he did the census. He immigrated to the US in 1910 he was born in 1890, he was, his birthplace was Italy. And here we have Rose, who was Frank's mother. She was born in 1896, she was 24 years old when the survey was done, the census was done. And uh, she was also born in Italy in 1896. Here we have Francis Skirbo, or as he was known, Frank Skirbo. Uh, this is his extract from the um, 1920 census that was done in New York, in the USA. Uh, this is the actual young lad who was gifted the uh, this steam engine, this Whedon steam engine. And uh, sadly, he only lived till he was around 15 or 16, which is pretty sad when, I, when I'm holding this steam engine and thinking of this young lad receiving this on a Christmas morning. And lastly, we have Alfred Skirbo, who I think must have been um, the brother who wrote the note that was put into the burner. Unless Albert and Rose, the parents, had a, a late child later in life, I'm thinking that it must have been Alfred, who was the person who... Uh, wrote that handwritten note, cut it out into the circle and put it inside the burner. Unfortunately, I can't make out that signature to definitely see that it does say a Fred or an Alfred. Well, there we have the history of this remarkable engine that's found its way from the USA to down here to my steam room on the south coast of New South Wales, Australia. This Whedon upright. I'm not sure of the model number of this Whedon, but absolutely amazing to me. Tinged with some sadness that the, the, the young boy that got this didn't live a long life. But just, just to think that that came through that somebody went to the trouble, I'd say it was the brother, to put that in there, in that burner. And even remarkable that nearly 100 years later, the burner is still with the engine. Like we all know uh, people who collect steam engines, that the burners are often, they go walkabout and they lose part and uh, you, you don't see the burners all the time with an, with an engine. Especially remarkable that it's 
they've stayed together for a hundred years. So I hope that's interested you all as much as it's interested me. It's just absolutely amazing. Apologies if I sound a little bit nasally. I'm just getting over COVID. I tested uh, positive to COVID four or five days ago and uh, feeling much better now, but still, still feel like I've got a, a bad head cold. So again, apologies if I feel uh, sound, not feel. See, I'm mumbling up my words now. Sorry if I sound a bit nasally. And I know that Australians can sound a little bit like that at the best of times. So again, my apologies. But there we have it. This wonderful steam engine. I really hope you've enjoyed this walk back in time. And uh, if you've got any stories like this, I'd be really interested to know. I've got a few more, actually, that when I find some time, I might run through. People have sent me um, a, a bit of a handwritten history on the engines that I've bought from different places in the world. And uh, it's, it's just wonderful to have that little bit of knowledge. But just when I think back to New York, I'm not sure what that part of New York was like in the 1920s but from seeing films and old black and white I, I can imagine that the 1920s families weren't flush with money especially an Italian immigrant family so for the parents to have bought this in 1925 for their son I'd say that would have been a, a, a fairly costly outlay but uh, my, my dog's barking, or both my dogs are barking. They think there's someone at the door because I'm talking. They can hear me talking on the video, which is, I think most people have got used to my videos hearing dogs barking. So again, I apologise for that. But uh, yeah, getting back to what I was saying. 1925 in New York, I, I think even though it's it's a, a Whedon, it's not a, it's not a Marklin, it's not a Plank, it's not a Doll, it was still, it still would have been an outlay to have bought this, to put under the Christmas tree, for a for a young lad. I hope he, I hope he steamed it. I hope he enjoyed it, and I hope he had many hours with his brother and his mother and his father sitting around. In their in their unit, their flat, their apartment, their tenement, in New York. But just amazing that this, this is from an immigrant family from Italy. And I'd love to, I'd love to find some ancestors and be able to tell them that I've got this engine and the history of it. I, I still, I still think that, um, this has ended up in a, an estate sale and nobody's ever opened this up. No one's ever known that this was in there. But just, um, because I, I can't imagine the brother selling this engine. And um, I think that what's happened is the brother has passed away. This has just gone into an estate sale, then someone put it onto eBay, and uh, it's arrived at my house. So anyway, I'm going to go, and as always, thanks for watching. Bye now.